after the murder of the late great Nipsey Hussle. It's totally confused me over the past week. I mean, that situation is heartbreaking on a number of levels, and it has me questioning a lot of things about life and things that I believed, in particular the law of attraction. And this is just something I'm going to work out uh, through therapy. Much like Charlemagne the God, the loss of Nipsey Hussle has a lot, a lot of people questioning a ton of things about life. But this isn't the first time this has happened. A lot of us have to wonder, why do bad things happen to good people? We can look at other influential people in history, such as Dr. Martin Luther King, Princess Diana. So in this video, I wanna talk about the loss of Nipsey Hussle, what that means to us, and some things that we might wanna take into consideration when it comes to the topic of life and death. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, sometimes I like to pull things from pop culture or the news to try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So it's been a couple weeks now since the unfortunate loss of Nipsey Hussle. So I will admit, like, uh, I didn't listen to much of Nipsey's music. I have recently since he passed away just to kind of see what he's about. I've watched a lot of videos and interviews and just discussions about him. And like, this is the type of dude who I respect. Like, it is so unfortunate that we lost this man. Like, I, I respect so many people who come from a troubled past and they reach a point of success and they try to give back. Like that's what so many of us are trying to do. And like Nipsey was doing that. He he grew up, you know, and he was uh, affiliated with like the wrong crowd, you know, and all of that. And he found success and fame through his rap career and also made money off that. But he was trying to give back to the community and he was trying to do different types of programs that would help other people who are still stuck in the situation which he used to be in. And I think I talked about this in a, in a video I did just the other day, was like, that's something that we can do to give back, right? Now that we've got something, what can we do to teach the people from where we came from how to follow that path of success? I am a true, true, true believer in if you want to be successful, whatever your definition of success is, find somebody with a similar story to yours and who is successful and see what they did and follow in that path. So Nipsey Hussle was doing some great things, not only opening up um, uh, uh, businesses in his old neighborhood, but right before he passed away, he was actually about to start working with the LAPD on how to reduce you know, violence in Los Angeles, right? And unfortunately, he was shot and killed, okay? So what Charlemagne the God was talking about, and I've seen, um, a few Breakfast Club segments where they talk about this and something that they bring up is like the law of attraction and like it's interesting too because I've seen Charlemagne kind of talk about this a few times and like you could you could just tell that he's messed up about this not only just by how he looks but when he says it like it doesn't seem like he's just like saying it just to say it like you can tell he's questioning things and I think a lot of people are doing that like isn't, isn't it supposed to work out when you put good out there, you get good back? So I have some views on this. As a recovering drug addict and alcoholic who spent almost a decade of my life being an awful person, like absolutely, this is something that I, I check in with and I'm like, okay, well what can I do now? What good can I put out there now, right? And, and here's the thing. I think, in my opinion, when you put good out there, like it doesn't give you like this immunity to bad things happening. And I think that's where people get tripped up. They think it's like an immunity. Like I'm very analytical and I kind of look at things like in a certain way. And and I think, I think what it does, at least in my experience, is it reduces the chances of bad stuff happening, right? When you start doing good things and being a good person, it reduces the chances of bad things happening, but it doesn't make you completely immune, right? So like when I was out there drinking, using, lying, cheating, stealing, and everything like that, everything was constantly chaos, right? Friends hated me, family members hated me, I was losing jobs, losing you know, uh, relationships, lost you know, the ability to even hang out with my son, see my son, and all of that. But once I started trying to be a better person and put more good out there into the world, it, it reduced the chances of bad things happening. Like Gary Vaynerchuk always says, like karma is practical, 
right? Like if we do our best to be kind, generous, honest, giving, you know, um, all of those things, it reduces the chance of things happening, right? But that doesn't completely negate bad things happening. And here's why, because as humans, we have self-will. And there are evil people out there who are going to do awful things to us that we have no control over. And we need to remember that. So although we're reducing our chances of bad things happening, like there are still bad people who are going to try to hurt us, okay? Now here's where I'm gonna start giving a little tough love, but this is tough love that I have to give to myself as well. And when I look at people who are like living a life by like the law of attraction and things like that, like I have to question my own motives when it comes to this thing, right? I have to question, why am I putting good out there? Why, why am I doing this? What is my motive? Because when you look at it, for most of us, we're putting good out there in order to get something in return. We're trying to get a feeling or an emotion, or maybe we're trying to get success or admiration, right? And that admiration comes with a feeling or emotion, right? People thanking us or like news headlines saying like, oh, this person donated this much to charity and da 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 right? So were we truly, truly being altruistic or selfless in that situation? This is something that I've always had to ask myself and it's something that, even to this day, even though I've been working on this for six plus years now, it's something that I still struggle with and it's still something that I'm working on and working through. Because it used to be that I kept tabs on everybody, right? Like, you either have that friend or you are that friend where you're keeping tabs on everybody, where you do people favors, right? But it's like, what are you gonna give me in return, right? Oh, don't you remember that one time I did this thing for you? Like, was that truly selfless? So. When I look at what I've done and the community I've tried to build and try to be there for people, like I was, it was beaten into my head to help people, be of service, don't expect anything in return. And I wasn't expecting anything except for the bare minimum. I did a video on this the other day with Dr. Mark Goldston where my struggle is, is like, I didn't want anything. I didn't want anything from this other person. I didn't want, you know, uh, I didn't want fame. I didn't want money. I didn't want anything. I just wanted, to be someone who can help them out. But it hurt when they turned on me, right? So I still have to dig down deeper and say, what is it that's still in there that's part of me where I even expect that? Because our expectations set us up for failure. You see what I mean? Like that's the issue that we have. Parents have it with their own kids, right? I fed you, I supported you, I put a roof over your head and now you're gonna disrespect me? You see what I mean? Like, even if we're not asking for much, we're still asking for something. And that's something that so many of us need to work on. The way that I've been trying to get out of it, if, if you can relate to what I'm saying, is forgiveness. Forgiveness and empathy and understanding, understanding that that other person is hurting, right? Now, sometimes caught up in the emotions of the thing, it's very hard for us to see that. But going back to this truly selfless, type of uh, behavior that we have. I always remember this story um, or this little anecdote of like uh, uh, atheist versus religious people. And what can religious people, not all religious people, but some religious people learn from an atheist. And the way the story goes is what you can learn from an atheist is they're doing something without any expectation that they're gonna you know, reach this like, eternity of bliss and splendor in heaven. You, you know that an atheist is just doing the right thing to do the right thing, right? And this is where we have to question this. Like, I'm, I'm not a religious person, but it's still that questioning that I have to ask myself. Why am I doing the good thing? What result am I expecting from doing that good thing, right? But when it comes back to, you know, the loss of Nipsey Hussle, like, I often think about, and maybe it's because I had a brush with death six and a half years ago because of my addiction. I often think about what is the legacy that I wanna leave behind? If I go out and get hit by a bus tomorrow, what do I wanna leave behind? And here's the thing. I think, I think when we question the loss of Nipsey Hussle, we, we, we see a young man who was taken far too soon. And that's true, that's very true. But look at the legacy that he left behind, right? a young man who came from the hood and made something of, uh, of himself and used his time on this planet to give back, right? So a lot of us are so wrapped up in the quantity of life, right? 
rather than the quality. So we prioritize how long we're going to live rather than what good we're going to do on this planet while we are here. And I made a video the other day about people caring way too much about Instagram models. And it's all about getting your priorities in check, right? Like why do you care so much about things that don't matter? Work on things to leave a good impact on this planet. What did you give? It's not about what we got, it's about what we gave to this world. And that is where Nipsey's true success came from is when people look back and remember Nipsey Hussle, it's not gonna be his music, right? Even though a lot of people are fans of his music, it's the impression he left on this world. And with the loss of him, we're seeing even more people saying, you know what? I need to continue that man's legacy. And I think that's something that all of us should strive for when it comes to remembering, you know, the memory of Nipsey Hussle, all right? But anyways, anyways, uh, that's all I got for this video. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts on these uh, topics down below in the comment section. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron and support the channel and get some exclusive content and perks, click a tap right there, all right? Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.